What would you have liked to have been? What would you like to have been? What would you like to be? She said, oh, I think I would like to have been a porpoise. You know, porpoise, the big fish that they dance, jump on the river. <laughs> she thought that would be a very nice life to be, to be a porpoise. <laughs> and then there were other people also that, that there was this um, <coughs> young American youth. Shuru Prabhupada was talking about, he said, you have to be careful, you may become a dog in your next life. And the young man said, oh, I think that's good, you know, dogs, they, they have a nice life, run around all day, play with the other dogs, you know. And so Shuru Prabhupada said, I give you my blessings, <laughs> become a dog. <laughs> People sometimes they're not very intent. We don't we don't realize what it's like to be in these bodies. You know, just like if you're a dog, you know, the people they put that thing around the neck and they hold the dog on the leash, so the poor dog is just you know led around like that. It's it's not a very fulfilling life in the animal body. Animal body means bad karma. It means they did not do very good things in their last life. And as a result, they have taken birth in the animal species. In the animal species, then they will have four activities. <coughs> Eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. <coughs> that is animal life. They only do these things. They eat, they sleep, they mate, and they defend. That is not what human life is meant for. We have achieved the rare human birth. We have a greater responsibility. And if we only eat and sleep and mate and defend, then we have wasted the human life. The human life is meant for inquiry. We're meant to understand the purpose of life. We're meant to ask, who am I? Where am I going? What's going to happen to me at the time of death? Where am I going? We want, we want to understand, why am I suffering? I want to be happy. Why am I suffering? We have to understand these things. We're, we're not meant to just only eat and sleep. That is not human life. That is a waste of human life. So chanting Hare Krishna mantra is the beginning of our awakening. It's the beginning of our awakening to high, to pure consciousness. If you take up this chanting and regularly chant the Hare Krishna mantra, then it will help you to come to proper understanding about the value of this life. We have, we have responsibility. In the human form of life, we enjoy many facilities. You can see we have schools for education, we have hospitals when we get sick, we have transportation systems, and we have so many different uh, amenities and facilities which are there for the humans. They're not there for the animals. So with facility comes responsibility. Just like in the government office, the highly placed government officer will have a better salary and he will be given more facilities. He may be given car, he may be given house, because he's got more responsibility. 
be given more facility. Similarly, we are in the human body, we are given more facilities. We have a responsibility more than the animal. The animals are only eating and sleeping and mating and defending. If we waste our life just doing these things, then next life we can become an animal. And that is the, the fate which awaits us. If we don't take proper advantage of the human life, then we will be put into the lower species of life. So very important for us. And as I say, this awakening begins when we start to chant the Maha Mantra. It's an awakening. Just like as the sun rises. When the sun rises every morning, the darkness is over. So then we don't we're not so much in fear. In darkness there's always fear. What oh who's there and what's coming? We we're a little disturbed by the darkness. We don't know what's happening. But once the light comes, once the sun rises, then that fear is gone. You can see everything clearly. So the chanting of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the awakening, the opening of our eyes. Opening of our eyes to see the real knowledge, to understand the real nature of life. So this chanting is very important for us. So we will chant for a little while and you can experience it yourself. Yeah. 
be done any time and any place. There are no rules about this thing. You can chant in the morning, in the evening, in the day, in the night. You can chant anywhere, anytime. And anyone and everyone can join in the chanting and be benefited by the sound of the <coughs> mantra. So we encourage all of you to try to chant this Maha Mantra. And it will help you also if you read the book called Bhagavad Gita. This is very important book here. The Bhagavad Gita. This is like the Bible of India. And so Bhagavad Gita is spoken by Lord Krishna. It's a dialogue. Lord Krishna is talking to Arjuna, a person called Arjuna. And Arjuna is about to fight, he's about to take part in a battle, a great battle which took place 5,000 years ago in a place called Kurukshetra. So the Bhagavad Gita begins like that, Dharma Kshetri Kurukshetra. That, uh, the Bhagavad Gita is spoken in Kurukshetra. Kurukshetra, you can go to that place. If you go to India, you can visit that place also. I said earlier, you could go to Vrindavan. When you go to Vrindavan, you can also go to Kurukshetra. It's also near to Delhi. A little different direction, but not far away. India is a big country, of course, and sort of sit back. Anyway, it's a place where Lord Krishna spoke Bhagavad Gita. And he, he spoke the Bhagavad Gita not only for the benefit of Arjuna, but for all of us, for the benefit of everyone today. When Lord Krishna comes in this world, his mission is described in the Bhagavad Gita. It is said, probably the people from India, they know this, how Lord Krishna's mission is described in the Bhagavad Gita, right? Yada yadahi dharmasya glanir bhavati bharata adbhutanam dharmasya tadatmanam shujyamani. Right? People from India are nodding their heads in approval. They understand this. That Lord Krishna is saying, whenever and wherever there is a decline in religiosity and a, re a rise of irreligion, at that time I descend. And Lord Krishna describes his purpose in coming, that he comes to give pleasure to his devotees and to uh, annihilate the miscreants and re-establish the principles of religion. The principles of religion. I was speaking about this a, a little earlier. I was speaking about the importance of mercy. That is one of the principles of religion. People may say, oh, you know, today we're not very religious. People are not very eager to be religious in this, this age. But actually, there's a need for religion. There's a need for cultivating good quality to make the world a better place. going to church or going to temple, but religion means to follow certain principles. And there are important principles like cleanliness. Is it important to be clean? Certainly, we all want to, um, to, keep, to keep some standard of cleanliness. It's very important for our health physically and 
mentally and also spiritually. We say cleanliness is next to godliness. So cleanliness is not just only changing the clothes or bathing, but it's also cleaning our heart, cleaning the mind and the heart. How do we do that? How can we clean, clean the heart? We can do that by chanting Hare Krishna. The Maha Mantra has that effect. This cleanses the heart. It takes away the anger and the envy and the passion and the lust and the greed. All of these things are forgotten about when we start to chant. Welcome. <laughs> Future devotees, right? So we're we are teaching people the importance of principles like cleanliness by teaching them to chant Hare Krishna. We can clean the soul because the soul becomes covered. We become covered by ignorance, by ego. We forget our spiritual identity and we become lost in the material world, identifying with the flesh. We take care of the flesh, we don't take care of the soul. It's very important to chant Hare Krishna Mantra. So cleanliness is one principle, mercy is another principle, meaning being kind to others. Not killing the animals is one type of mercy. Another kind of mercy is to give people some spiritual benefit, give them some knowledge. Just like we like to tell people to chant Hare Krishna. We, just like today in Stockholm, in the city, the devotees are there and they're having a procession and they're all chanting Hare Krishna mantra. By the loud chanting of the Maha Mantra, people are getting mercy. That is one type of mercy which we can easily give to others. We chant the holy name or we ask other people, please chant Hare Krishna. When we greet people, we, we, we don't just say hello, but we like to say Hare Krishna. We like them to hear the holy name, to hear the sound of Lord Krishna's name. This is mercy. So cleanliness is important. Mercy is important. Austerity is another principle of religion. Austerity may sound a little frightening to you. Austerity means to give up pride. Our austerity is destroyed by pride. As we say, pride comes before the fall. Intoxication. And 
today, many, there are many kinds of intoxication which are commonly taken by people all over the world. For example, people like to drink things like tea and coffee. Tea and coffee are also intoxicants. They have caffeine. They have caffeine. We become addicted to them. We become so addicted to them that we can't live without them. And when we ask people to give up tea or coffee, they find it all oh, so difficult because they're so much addicted to drinking tea and coffee. So these are intoxicants. Things like onion and garlic are also not encouraged because they are stimulants. They are also another kind of intoxicant. They simply increase the lust and the passion in the body. We already have a lot of lust and passion in the body. When you're going to eat onion and garlic, you're going to increase that passion. <coughs> so, in our Krishna conscious lifestyle, we don't use onions and we don't use garlic either. And we don't drink tea or coffee. You want tea? There's herbal tea. There's rose tea. There's jasmine tea. There's fl flower tea. Chrysanthemum tea. There's many different ginger tea. You don't have to have that caffeine tea, black tea, yeah. home tea. And in India, if you go to India, traveling on the train, in the, what do you hear every morning? Chai, chai, chai. <laughs> chai is a Hindi word for tea, you know. The, the vendor comes selling cups of tea for everyone. As soon as they open their eyes, they want to drink a cup of tea. So tea, it's not for the bodies to drink. And we don't, of course, take alcohol or smoke cigarettes and things like that. These things may be legal, but they're addictive and they're harmful. They're harmful to the health, physically, mentally, and spiritually. So we practice that austerity. So cleanliness, mercy, austerity, and there's one more, truthfulness. It's important to be truthful, to be honest and truthful. And, and that's a difficult principle for people to keep. Everywhere in the world, there's so much lying and cheating going on. People hide the truth. They don't want to admit the truth. Truthfulness means also to make proper use of time. <coughs> we don't waste our time watching television, watching movies, the different movies which are there. There's so many things now, of course we have G4, G5, people are watching all the time, movies, non-stop. So they're living in the dream world, watching one movie after another. But in Krishna consciousness, we don't waste our time. You watch movies and you're, you're in a dream world. It's not true, it's not reality. It's just a drama which they're putting on for entertainment. So it's all a waste of time. We want to cultivate the truth. 
the absolute truth, not some false illusory truth which is shown in some movie. So these four principles are very important. They are the pillars of religion. Krishna comes to establish these principles. Cleanliness, mercy, <coughs> austerity, truthfulness. When these principles are powerful, when they're kept strong, then the world will be in a much better condition. Just imagine what the world would be like if we were to close down all the casinos, all the bars, all the all the all the meat eating, all the killing of animals. Why are there wars in the world today? Now there's so many conflicts in the world. Russia with Ukraine, Israel with with the. Uh, Syria, Palestine. Palestine. So many conflicts going on around the world. Why? These are reactions from all the killing which we've been doing to the animals. Because we kill animals. So you get reactions for these things. We cannot expect that we can do all these simple things and not be punished. Reactions come. You get reactions. We have to learn how to live in a proper, civilized manner. So these four principles are very important. Our Krishna conscious community is established here to show an example to people how you can live simply and naturally, depending on God and nature. How we can depend, we grow many vegetables and flowers, you can see the flowers here, they're all from our land, and the vegetables, we grow a lot of the vegetables here. Of course, we, we need more time, we need more help, there's a lot of, we have a lot of land here, we want to develop more the land here. And you can all help. You come. You can come on the weekend and help do some gardening. Or anytime you're free, you can come and help us cultivate the land. There's so much work to be done. And you will benefit greatly by the association. To be in the association of devotees. Chanting Hare Krishna mantra, living simply, eating spiritual food, eating pure food, meaning food which is not meat or fish or egg, which is not filled with onions and garlics, but pure food prepared by pure people. The people who prepare the food, they are also following these principles. You go to a restaurant, you eat food cooked by some man who is also not very clean and not very pure in his habits. So, you get affected by the consciousness. The consciousness is in the food. And if we eat food cooked by a person in bad consciousness, then it will have a bad effect on us. So we have to eat. We have to know what to eat, where to eat. And it helps if you will chant the Maha Mantra. That chanting has to be done very regularly, very carefully. So we encourage all of you, try to chant. And you can get beads, just like you can see I have a bag with beads in. So you should get a bead, a bag with beads, and you chant on the beads. And that makes it very easy for you to chant. You keep the bag with you, and you keep your hand in the beads, and you can be chanting. It's very nice. Every day, especially in the morning, it's very good to chant on the beads. And you see, the Buddhists, they also do this. They have their beads. 
the Catholic, they have the rosary, they're chanting. The Muslims, they also have beads, they're chanting. So we are also chanting. But we are chanting Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Thank you very much. Do we have time for questions? Do you have any questions? Maybe not this time, but maybe one, one question. Maybe one question. Okay, there, there are voices here saying we should have kirtan. We use the. Okay. Anyone have questions? You can come and see me. I'll be here. I'm just going to How does the Krishna go over there? I go and see them because